and you will tell us for 20 minutes how to be a tech rock star. Ken Ratri is CEO and co-founder of Geek Hunter, and we're really glad to have her today with us. Ken, are you able to join? Yes. Perfect. So, yeah, are you able to share your screen? We're really glad to have you and to listen from you about how to be a tech rock star. Sure, sure, Mehdi. Give me a few seconds. I think I have a bit of technical difficulties. All right. Of course, no problem. Okay, everything yeah. works now, right? Yeah, that's good. All right, then I'll continue. I'll take it from here. Thanks, Mehdi. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Mehdi mentioned, I'm Ken Ratri Iswari, founder and CEO of Geek Hunter. And today, basically, uh, you are going to learn about secret recipe on how to be the most wanted tech rock star. And to give a bit of disclaimer, I'm not actually a tech rock star. I'm a tech recruiter. So what I will share today is basically Geek Hunter two and a half years learning from top tech talent that we have. So we do like a lot of study with the top CTO, VP engineering, and also rising tech rock star in Indonesia. And this is basically our findings, how uh, they can get into their top position and be a tech rock star. And this is also uh, our market understanding based on what our clients or slash employers wants and needs from the tech talent. So first of all, um, one of the commonality of the top tech talent that we met is they know what they want to be. And what does it mean with uh, they know what they want to be is because they know what, what will be the focus on their career or what will be the next focus on their uh, tech career. So basically to define clearly whether you want to be like a specialist or generalist, but I think in Indonesia, mostly uh, now the direction is going into more a specialist. So let's say you want to be a backend engineer, then what backend that you want to pursue, what programming language that you want to pursue, whether it is Java or PHP, or let's say if you want to be a mobile engineer, then what will be your next focus? Is it iOS on Swift or Objective-C or is it something else? So what is really important is to know what will be your focus or your next focus on your next career. So that will be number one. And uh, most of the question I get is, can what happen if I don't know what, uh, what will be my focus for the next one? Then you need to explore what you want to be or what the next role you want to push your next one. And then after that, uh, of course, to define where do you want to work or basically on this, I want to highlight more on what kind of portfolio that you want to build because right now there are so many options. Uh, the trend right now is on FinTech mostly, but on the last, let's say, to, to, from 2017 to 2019, the trend mostly on marketplace and e-commerce. So you need also to define like what kind of portfolio do you want to build slash where do you want to work it's very good if you already have uh, let's say companies or startup in mind uh, that you want to work with because it will be easier and then after you found out those two uh, what your focus will be and also which company or which let's say sectors that you want to work with then after that it will be easier and then after that, what you can do is basically um, doing the research and doing the research is from the companies that you want to work with, you can try to get like from their career side or from their job advertisement, what are their criteria? And the criteria is basically coming from uh, the job description and the job responsibilities of that company that you want to work for. So what is important is to define what is the must have and also the good to have skill. And so what, uh, you will do is to break down the job description and also the job responsibility and see what is the must have and also what is the good to have skills and what knowledge that you want to have. And then after that, what you will do is to do a self-assessment uh, like this. So let's say to be able uh, to get the job, what kind of knowledge, skills and abilities and the set of competencies that you need. And then after that, it's important to do like a self-assessment on that. Let's say on the skill, what is required is uh, 
let's say it's PHP and for PHP the framework that is used is Laravel and the data set will, uh, that is used is MySQL. So you need to do a self-assessment on the technical skill, what it is for you from the score one to 10. And then you can also imagine, let's say if I want to work at uh, company A, if right now my competency is at six, I think they will expect me to have uh, at least eight and then you know that you have a gap and from that gap let's say uh, there are two on the gap then you can create an improvement plan from that like okay so how to improve whether you do a course or you do a training or you take a certification or you get a mentor etc so this is uh, very important to be able to get uh, your dream job And then after that, uh, this is not really a secret, but I'll put it as the secret recipe of uh, most wanted tech rock star. So I divided it into a three section. The first one is the technical and soft skill. The second one is related with education courses and certification. I will explain about this further. And the third one, because uh, with the employer, also often uh, will be related to where they can find your profile. And right now, I think all the companies uh, will always use LinkedIn to source or to find for a tech talent. So, of course, it's also important uh, to have like a powerful LinkedIn profile as well. So for the first one, um, I will talk about the technical and the soft skill. So basically, in terms of technical, as I mentioned before, I already uh, explained about the self-assessment that you need uh, to do in order to know like what aspect that you need to improve. So gain the knowledge and also the technical skill for the right role uh, that you want to pursue later on. And then after that also build the right portfolio because uh, some of the companies always require a certain portfolio as well. And uh, I think what is important also is uh, to get mentor and where you, you can get mentor is basically by joining the tech communities uh, and in Indonesia right now, there are so many tech uh, communities that you can, you know, join and learn from. Like one of the biggest tech communities in Indonesia, I would say it's uh, PHP Indonesia. I think the community has like more than thousand or, uh, you know, more than a uh, thousand members where you can also learn because they also have like a learning program around the communities. And uh, number six, practice and always learn to be better uh, each day. And then the second one, soft skill that company needs, but uh, they have a hard time finding are these five. So problem solving, communication, and in terms of the communication, because I think um, most of the tech founders and also the HR main complain uh, to me about tech talent, because most of the time uh, the tech talent our lack of communication skill and what it means because uh, I their assumption is most of the time the tech talent uh, interact with the computers so sometimes uh, they found it a bit difficult to express idea or to uh, you know like or to influence or to persuade if they have uh, like a good ideas or initiative so communication is very important as well especially uh, right now in the era of COVID-19 where we can, most of us are working uh, from home and working remotely. And then also collaboration. Collaboration is because uh, you will not only work within the tech team, but you will also work with the business side of the team and to understand what the market wants as well. So collaboration become important. And number four, adaptability and adaptability here, because uh, let's say when you move into a new company, there will always be like a, a different set of culture from where you come from. So adaptability is also very important. And the last one is uh, time and priority management. And on this side, on the uh, time and priority management, basically we juggle over like a lot of things, right? Sometimes there's bugs that you need to fix. Sometimes there is a deadline to deploy and everything. So it is also important to have a time and priority management. And in terms of education courses and certification, uh, yes, right now, the, uh, I think it is shifting. 
if before there is always a requirement on education but now some companies especially startup no longer require like a certain uh, degree or major if let's say before the requirement is always coming from informatics or computer science related background but now the good news is now uh, it's no longer become you know like uh, the main like, requirement for the education like university degree or major but uh, in Indonesia especially I think 80% of the companies still require university and degree major that's why uh, it is also still kind of important especially if you want to work in a corporate because if you work in a corporate for example like banking then most of the bank in Indonesia will always require, let's say, a minimum university degree, let's say coming from a bachelor degree or coming from diploma tree. And then also, uh, because now in LinkedIn, you can also like put all the courses that you, uh, that you already took. And now there are so many coming from, let's say, MIT or even like Harvard education, uh, a lot of free stuff out there and as a recruiter normally we also will see what kind of courses that you have take and certification is also important so you can also find the global benchmark uh, according to your role to know what will be like the right certification for your role uh, for example if you are on a uh, cloud and if you have aws certification it will be uh, a big boost for your career as well so that's on the part of education courses and certification and on the last one, because as I mentioned, a recruiter mostly uh, look at you from link, your LinkedIn profile summary and uh, also your English fluency. So what is important is to have an excellent online profile. And what I see lack of is because most of the people only put a very short without description kind of profile on LinkedIn. So let's say if you are a software engineer, then you just put software engineer and that's all without any description but then we don't know what what programming language that you use what framework that you use what is your tech stack so it's also very important to put on your linkedin profile the details of what you do as a software engineer and the tech stack that you are also using and then also building the right summary in your cv uh, because and also a uh, right summary is actually very simple you can just mention about the total experience that you have and then also uh, how many years the, uh, you do in certain programming language, for example, and then also like the project or the portfolio that you have. It will really help uh, recruiters to be able uh, you know, to, to find you on LinkedIn. And also uh, because most of the time recruiters will search for you based on the keywords. So it's important to put uh, a certain keywords. Let's say if you are a software engineer, don't put software warrior or software ninja, for example, because then as a recruiter, we will not be able to find you on your LinkedIn. And then the last one, English fluency, because uh, right now, the collaboration is uh, not only with, uh, you know, not only amongst uh, Indonesian counterparts, but also some of startup already hire a lot of developers from overseas as well. So it's also important for English fluency because I think right now what I see the trend is most of the companies will use uh, English also as uh, their, you know, a part of the interview as well. Okay, so all in all, basically, this is not really a circuit recipe, but uh, most wanted tech rock star by a recruiter normally has this uh, three part, the technical and soft skills, and then also the education courses certification and also have excellent LinkedIn profile and English fluency. All right, that's all from me. Uh, moving to the q and I'm Kenneth Iswari, founder and CEO of Geek Hunter. We are a tech recruitment company based in Indonesia. And may the force be with you, thank you. <laughs> Hi, Ken, Ratri. Uh, so two questions. The first one is uh, how, talent, how talent in Indonesia adapt to technology? Uh, sorry, how talent in Indonesia adapt to technology trends, for example, like Golang programming language? Yes. Are they fast to adopt new tech or is it still difficult to find talent that's fluent with new tech? Okay, actually in Indonesia, the trend is shifting every year. So let's say on the 2018, I think the hype was Ruby on Rails and then 2020, it was... Um, 
2020, I think it was Logis, React, and also Golang. And in Indonesia, frankly speaking, it's uh, as a recruiter, it's a bit difficult to find a developer that you know uh, explore like a new tech language. So in terms of to find the new tech stack, it's a bit difficult compared to let's say if you are uh, looking for Java or PHP or .NET. Because in Indonesia itself, I think the main uh, tech stack for the talent are on PHP, uh, Java, .NET, and also on Android. So if you are looking for those four, it's very easy. But let's say when you are looking for the new programming language, yes, uh, a lot of developer learn another uh, language or the hype language as well. But what happened is they don't have the opportunity to do a project or build a project around it. So that's why most of the time they don't put it on their, you know, on their profile regarding the new language that right now they are learning. And as an employer, normally what they have, uh, what they want is like, okay, I want to have uh, someone that able, uh, that, that let's say have a Golang experience in the last five years. But what happened is there is basically like uh, almost no one in Indonesia that have, let's say, Golang uh, experience in the last five years. Yeah, that that makes that makes sense. Uh, another question: Do talents that you found mostly will accept the offer from a new company? What is the most important point for these talents when reviewing the offers? To your mind? Okay, so the review criteria, right? Yeah, when it's okay. a new company. Sorry, I. Uh, I think I... I think the question is when it's a new company, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe okay. new or, or young. New startup, you mean? Yeah, maybe right. Okay. Okay. So right now, um, I think for a new company, it will be a bit difficult to find a talent. Uh, it will be easier during COVID-19 because last year, what happened in the industry is there are major layoffs that's going on in the tech industry, and also a lot of company do pay cut and furlough. So last year, there are around like 51 companies that asked my help uh, to basically uh, to to help them to place the talent that they need to let go. But right now, what happened in the industry is all the recruitment market is already back to normal. The increase I see compared to uh, COVID-19 last year is uh, around, we already see like 50% increase on that. So the talent market is already get back to normal, which make it difficult for like a new startup to, you know, be able uh, to, to get like a new talent. But what I see is important uh, is number one, beside the salary right now what they see is basically the sustainability or the job security so now this become a more important so as long as let's say you can put some information uh, on the information of which uh, stage are you and what kind of funding and what vc that invest on you i think it can help as well to you know uh, convince the tech talent and then number two of course it will be related with the employer branding so let's say if uh, there is no information about you on the internet, it will be a bit difficult. So whether, whether like your startup is new, I think it's important to have, let's say, one pager of information uh, to be able to convince uh, the tech talent. We have one last question. How tech recruiter oh, yeah. deal with candidates being offered counter offer by his her workplace? Well, I think in 2019, uh, the trend for the counter offer is very high. But honestly, in the last one year, I don't really see a counter offer happen or uh, going on. So basically, the way we see it, uh, if the company do a counter offer, then how we deal with the candidate, yeah, if, if that's the question, then basically we will make like a clear comparison and, um, you know, what will be the opportunity if you are at the end like pursuing a career on uh, your next potential employer. So we will make like the comparison based on all aspects, not only in terms of the remuneration, but also the benefit package and the potential learning, training, etc. that can be provided by the next potential employer. So by that, at the end, the candidate can decide better as well uh, which opportunity they, they will pursue, whether they need to uh, pursue the next opportunity at other company or they will start, they will stay at their current company. Yeah, and sometimes, uh, you know, when it's, uh, when the same company do the offer, you can, you can also say, look, they didn't want, they didn't do this offer, uh, you know, uh, proactively, they waited for you to find something else, so they may not value you 
directly, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes we use uh, the technique as well, maybe. Yeah, this is how it works, right? You know, talent are, uh, needs to be evaluated at their full value, right? Yeah, exactly. And also, I think well, what is interesting in Indonesia, because uh, World Economic Forum a few, few years ago released uh, an information that in Indonesia until the next 2030, uh, there will be uh, a talent shortage of 9 million ICT talent. So we are lack of 9 million ICT talent. That's crazy. And based on the article that I wrote for Forbes last year, what happened is in Indonesia, we only have 40,000 or 50,000 tech graduates per year. And from this 40,000 to 50,000 per year, maybe only 25% that at the end decided to pursue a career on tech. So it become a problem as well. That's why what happened in Indonesia is we don't have a lot of supply of tech talent, especially uh, very good tech talent. I can, yeah, we, uh, we can totally understand this, but yeah, it's great to see Indonesia uh, working well. Uh, um, and having an API conference at least, right? So it's a good sign. Thank you very much, Ken Ratri.